Halloween to all of you. Introducing my first ever scary countdown. We all have something to fear, especially when it comes to our worst enemies. In video games, that is. From my early years onward, I shall highlight those that gave me the most trauma growing up, and the contenders that still impact me in the present time. From my earlier childhood to my early adult years, these 12 enemies and sometimes bosses gave me, and perhaps anyone else, this unsettling feeling of fear, dread, and terror. So, care to join me? And I hope my scary entries can be similar to yours. Enter at your own risk, if you dare. Starting off this creepy list, we have... What's this? Yoshi Story? But that's a baby game! How can it possibly have some creepy enemies in it? Well, there were a couple. As a Melissa-phobic, I was too terrified to get even close to the bees, even though they can only make you freeze on contact. It didn't really make the cut like I was hoping for, but after some deep thinking, there was another, known only as the Lava Ghost. At the bells of a cave, Yoshi's dread on touching nature's entrails. But I'm not talking about the giant blur that pops out of the red. I'm talking about... this thing. The Lava Ghost is very easily noticeable. It's the most brightest monster amongst the dark depths of the cave. And it's also just as prominent with its emergence and rippling from the magma, and letting out its subtle, though creepy moan. Luckily it has a predictable arching pattern, and since it stands out like a shiny fiery knife, it can easily be averted. And that's why it's only number 12. But MAN! Laying my eyes and ears on it for the rarest times make it terrifying! I wonder if it's actually crying for help to end its suffering. I even dreaded coming to this level because of that. Ooh, wish I had some ice projectiles to freeze and shatter that haunting, daunting spirit. It was the year 1991. My parents started their own second mom-and-pop shop, by the time when I was four. Sonic had just declared the first console war, and there was a plethora of games to choose from. From the blue blur, to a plumber riding a dinosaur, and one that caught my eye, a simulation of a dolphin. Echo piqued my curiosity. As an animal lover, how could I resist? It was a tricky game controlling the marine mammal, as you always extended your time limit of oxygen within 1 minute and 15 seconds. But until I got to the dreadful undercaves, the mazes were a tumultuous navigation. But it wasn't until I heeded the crystal's warning. It was then when I first encountered the aggressive octopus. I grew nervous whenever I had to swim slowly past it. Even with the slightest speed up can leave you hit by its giant arms. The creepy cephalopod along with Echo's screeches gave me so much angst, especially since you have a limited time to fill up your oxygen. You can't always be patient and take things slowly. It can take me a solid minute on slowly swimming past its powerful arms. It was like corporal punishment within a game. I was lucky to reach the ocean vents afterwards. Phew. Sayonara, cephalopod. Until you reach the dreaded lagoon. Ugh! That was my drop off.
Another animal that turned out to be creepy was Evil the Cat from Earthworm Jim. Even by its second level, what the heck, this was probably the first time I'd experienced schizophrenic difficulty. Navigating through the hellish maze was bad enough, as long as you're not terrified by those shadowy carnivorous demons, or being overly frustrated by those tricky hooks. One of my parents' friends showed me the way, and that was when I came face to face with... Evil. His first form was easy, but as soon as I was able to get the power suit back, the boss fight went from one and skyrocketed to a hundred. There was nothing but complete darkness, and the feline blended in well within the shadows, only to maul you unawares trying to rip you out of your advanced body. I remember literally muting this fight, just to never hear that antagonizing noise. And my vision was so poor that there were times I had to wait for my plasma gun to recharge. I was so damn lucky to put an end to his nine lives. Literally. And then there was that tricky underwater level. Again with the oxygen time limit! Oh god, even the game itself can be evil. About a year later, after I had that fright with a cat from hell, 1993 was a pivotal year for animals. From the resurrection of fossilized monsters from long ago, to having a whale of a time, my mom and pop shop received a unique 16-bit title that was dropped on the shelves. That game was Star Fox. I remember this game had given me a plethora of fear pangs. From the inevitable crashing scene, to those terrifying sneers of those unrelenting asteroids, and even descending into the bowels of hell. After I finally defeated the annoying Fantron at Planet Venom, my blood turned cold as I witnessed the giant monstrous face that was Andros. Damn! This thing terrified me! I never wanted to even look at it! All those telekinetic blocks he uses, and how he nearly sucks you into his void mouth! Even the way he looks is his monkey self! I even remembered hearing the instrumental break from Magic Carpet Ride by Steppenwolf, reminding me of how wide and powerful Andross's mouth is. Oh, and in 64, he didn't help at all! Four years later, I always hated getting swapped by his aggressive hands like a fly, chewing the wings off my vessel, even when Fox screamed in terror! I thought I'd be next in line, the same way he killed James McCloud even showing his brain and escaping from the collapsing lair manually used to give me nightmares. Andros isn't only just an evil maniacal genius, but a master of a child's worst fears. I grew out of them eventually, but I can never forget how traumatizing that evil ape can possibly be. At the very end of the game, after you plowed through a tumultuous boss rush, you soon encounter the center layer of Death Heat, the devil himself, Tansra. Before the game took place, you lost to him, and got resurrected for a second chance. And this creepy claw isn't something to be messed with. His first form is easy, as just a floating head shooting large stalactites and huge orbs. But then, 
Yeah. His second form is where it's at. His health bar literally stretches across the screen along with listening to his terrifying boss theme while it picks up. As if it isn't enough to crap your pants. But he has a plethora of moves such as his claw, honing missiles, a large projectile shot from his chest, and arching fireballs. As long as you know what you're doing, you should be fine. But as a kid, he terrified me in the early 90s. But as I grew older and beat it on an emulator, thanks to a walkthrough I found on Game Winners, it was one of the most triumphant things I had ever witnessed. Another 64 the enemy I've always dreaded were the Redeads from Ocarina of Time. Anyone can tell you just how terrifying these undead beings are. Ever since I was a teenager, I hated those damn dead men walking. I first came across a horde of them at the devastated market seven years into the future. And that was on a save file in which the water temple wasn't completed. Eight of those creepy, bare-naked zombies were everywhere. And this was before I learned about the Sun Song. From the way they scream and paralyze you, to their sluggish movements and moans, and most of all, when they squeeze the life out of you. Yeah, I know, it's more like a raping motion, but I'd always see them as life constrictors. The way an anaconda crushes the life force out of its prey. I hurriedly ran away from these scary things, and never worked up the courage to face them till several years later. Oh, oh dude! Ah, ah, oh, oh, get it off! Get it off! And these abominations were created by the Sheikah to protect the royal family tombs. They're really beyond insanity. I would always picture a dark type Pokemon either clobbering or burning these corpses to a crisp. Even within many dark places like the Shadow Temple. Under the well and beneath the graveyard, even if one should stall you while escaping Ganon's deathly self-destruction on the castle, you are never safe until you know how to freeze them temporarily. Then I drastically slice them to ribbons before the effects should wear off. And they happen to be based on Japanese Guardians of Tombs as clay monsters. Jeez! This better not happen to me when I should pass away. No one has ever mentioned the 16-bit classic as pointed in my underappreciated video games. Perhaps some of those reasons include the many scary dangers that lurk within the Drakhen Island, such as the bloodthirsty shark circling Prince Hordekin's moat, which instantly kills you, or perhaps the island center, which is overcrowded with tombstones that should be avoided, as bumping into one would release a very terrifying hellhound. That's terrifying enough, but it didn't make the cut, as they're easily avoidable simply by... not hitting the tombstone, and isn't a random encounter. This one, however, is... known simply as... The Shade of Doom. These giant humanoids are merciless and horrifying. 
These are the shadowy monsters that mainly lurk in either the swamp, arctic, and most of all, the difficult place, the desert. They are random encounters that can't be easily avoided. These black bastards have their own creepy theme song, showing only their bleeding hearts and shooting down arrows like a meteor shower with striking accuracy and a shitload of HP! They may pack a crapload of experience, but these guys are like a death sentence. As soon as you come across these humongous monstrosities in the overworld, kiss your party's lives goodbye. I remembered my sis playing it as a young kid, and when I had recess, I imagined them always chasing me. They may kill you faster than you can even scream. Skip these dark deities at all costs. Super Mario 64, the undefeated champion of 3D platformers, so colorful and dreadful at times, and home to a ton of glitches. There were a few cringy aspects within these 64 bits, from the dread of drowning, to being eaten alive by that piranha that make your own stomach flip, the frustratingly endless staircase, and... Sweet merciful Batman! Oh. I know some people might... You know what? No. It's not that hungry piano. Sure, it was at first a little scary, but like Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, I'd grown used to it after a short while. But there was one thing, that one unexpected obstacle that I can't anticipate, in which I call it... The Nameless Bomb. It can only be found in a couple of the latter levels within the lobby of the top floor, specifically Tall Tall Mountain and Tiny Huge Island. You can't stand in one place for too long, otherwise the goddamn black bomb would appear and grow right behind you, then follow you and expand till it explodes! This wasn't intentional, as about a decade ago I discovered from a YouTube comment it's a glitch within the game's coding. I don't know what the hell the developers achieved when they made this. I never wanted to see it again, as I dreaded staying in one spot for even a few seconds at these hellish worlds. I also grew nervous on even returning to these places on collecting more power stars. I'd always stayed away from the island and mountain, as I would be safe within those other levels. No one has ever talked about this, and this is one of the reasons why I love the DS version a hell of a lot more. All the bugs are fixed in one of the game's rabid Luigi hates. Be grateful for that, you snobby bastard! Ah, F-Zero. My all-time favorite racing franchise. Such a large variety of environments, worlds, characters, and machines to choose from. With a ginormous diversity like F-Zero, there's bound to be a few creepy, not to mention hateable enemies. Such as Zoda, Miss Killer, The Skull, Blood Falcon, and Black Shadow. However, there was one character that often doesn't get the spotlight is constantly overlooked and is virtually unknown as of now. And the next contender is Deathborn. Seriously, just even mentioning his name can give people the willies. 
as he has been born from death on a few occasions. Up to three times since he's considered as a cyborg who literally wreaks havoc across time and space. Not much is known about him, and if anything highlights this mastermind is either shrouded in mystery, or just wasn't portrayed well like in the anime. Deathborn's known to be the champion of the underworld and the Emperor of Evil's overlord, excepting in the anime who happens to be a disguise of him and is a silent antagonist. Heh, <laughs> I guess silence isn't always golden. Whereas in GX, he speaks in a rather unearthly tone. I am Deathborn, the Grand Prix Champion of the Underworld. Why don't you and I race each other tomorrow? Surely, as champion, you have to accept. <laughs> His goal is to eradicate and govern the universe the way he sees fit, by simply combining the belts into one, and utilizing its power for utter inescapable annihilation and his machine, the Dark Schneider, and the relentless AI can be enough to make him terrifying, as you're literally racing for your life and the fate of the galaxy. The reason Deathborn's creepy is because it is mostly fear of the unknown, contrary to his underling since he's usually omnipresent. And he's even rumored to cause the horrific accident and send life forms into exile as lifeless vagabonds, which is even more fearful. It's just uncertain what Deathborn is capable of. Only in GX, that is. The anime just makes him as a schmuck and a simple chairman working behind the scenes. Rather unimpressive. And if that isn't enough, I portrayed him as a horrifying villain in my F-Zero fanfics, mostly in Falcon's followers and in the late chapters of ending it all. He's been so formidable and scary, not many live to tell the story, nor how much is known of his capabilities. And he just reminds me of Thanos from the Marvel Universe. I sometimes wish he'd get more spotlight, even in the new game hoping to revive the original. But he clearly speaks the phrase, What you don't know, can kill you. Doragon C. Mikado, or as I like to call him, the Tower of Terror, is one of the most serious bosses ever. The Bouncer was one of the first games I had for the PS2, and by the time you get to the halfway point in the game, you come across this mysterious man wearing a dark uniform and evil aura. You see him make a sucker punch onto his own sensei, and kill him by snapping his back like a fragile twig. I then grew very nervous on what he could do with the first major boss fight between him and his panther. And with the ragdoll physics, he's nothing to snuff about. He was once the orphan son who took care of his dying sister, then taken in by his surrogate father, Master Mikado. As he grew up, he was determined to follow in his footsteps no matter what the challenges await him. One day, he became the leader of the Mikado Corporation, and all the benevolence in his master's reign was lost. He hired some heartless assassins, conducted twisted experiments, and ruled over with his merciless regime. After you somehow managed to save your soul, and if you're lucky to reach the Galios, then he demonstrates his power onto the world, making a sort of Independence Day Death Star attack, and obliterates a hospital with his own satellite! Then, after Chaldea spills the beans on his motivation on ruling the world, the world with a well... Human beings want to be controlled. They forsake those who offer no benefit. They lord those with power. They can do nothing for themselves. 
Mankind's true desire is to be dominated by absolute power. And as if that wasn't bad enough, he challenged you in a multi-phase final boss fight within three distinctive forms. The fate of the world hangs in the balance, and you're trapped in space. You are literally at his mercy as Doragon punishes you with devastating blow after blow. Even those horrifying attacks that surround him with a powerful dark aura. And your blocks can't even save you! Before I went to high school, this was the most scariest enemy I'd ever encountered. I was completely lucky I was finally able to defeat him before my freshman year even started. Doragon has never left my mind ever since, and my bouncer to Trilogy deflects this. There were times when I lost my mind on how powerful and truly terrifying the Tower of Terror is. Even when royally losing to him, I remembered spamming either Sion or Ko's best moves until he was done. This was what I always dreaded on playing the game, and you can be rather unprepared while doing so. Both Square and Dream Factory know how to make a complete monster in human form. I dare you to sacrifice your life and sanity by going through this horrible fate. A lot of the contenders on the list tend to be either easy or escapable, but the top three will always be the definition of true terror. From Doragon's massive power and strength dominating the world and sense of helplessness, to a more sinister, more beastly form of nature that even saying his name shall make you wish you'd never lay your eyes on him. That being... I cannot say it clear enough. The countering intimidating centaur from the depths of Outworld is unmatched. Mortal Kombat 3 nailed the dark aesthetics the series is known for, and it can't possibly be replicated. There were no rules nor safeguards as Shao Kahn brings in hell onto Earth as we know it. And this does spell out Apocalypse especially when you come across his most terrifying mini-boss to date. Motaro literally screams creepy. Aside from his basic monstrous roars, he takes up one-third of the screen as you fight him in multiple angles. The balcony suddenly gets claustrophobic, even as soon as he backs you into the corner and shatters your bones and spirit, within a matter of seconds. He has very swift prances as he closes in on you. He uses his entire body to crunch you into dust, including his foot, his tripping tail, and of course his merciless muscle as he grabs and punches you across the arena. He can deflect your projectiles, rendering them useless. He can fire a laser from his own elongated tail. He can always spam and teleport right behind you! One second unprepared and you are literally his dinner. Ant Main 7 said it best. You are never safe for Motaro. Unless you can perhaps unlock the more formidable enemies such as Smoke, his own master, or even his carbon copy. You best pray to stay alive to conquer the Emperor and his stomach-lurching lair. The main reason he's only two was... I kinda got to like him as an awesome villain, much like Deathborn. He can rival any of the other centaurs in all media, 
even from, say, Final Fantasy's Mystic Quest and Hercules. This can clearly show, like the brightest star, that Motaro is the king of all his kind. Alright, Kenna down from 12 to 2, but before we get to the most creepiest enemy ever, here are some honorable mentions. The Final Fantasy Juggernaut has a shipload of full of terrifying monsters, including those you'd seen in the honorable mentions. But there was one other that stood out like a sword. Let me paint this picture for you. You're first stranded in an unknown location named the Underworld after your advanced airship has been shot down by the Red Wing's crossfire. You stumble upon a kingdom of dwarves, and you notice they're in peril since their dark crystal is about to get stolen. One quarter of them thanks to gold bets. So you guys head into the crystal chamber and suddenly get locked in. You're trapped like rats, and all of a sudden you hear this creepy carnival-like tune. And meet those deadly dolls named the Calcabrenna designed to kill you! Then you're dragged into this hopeless battle as three males and females spam constantly with their glancing blows. After a while, when their HP reaches a low limit, then the horror jacks up the ante. They merged into a giant robotic and devastating doll that is so damn difficult to defeat! Yeah, this is when the scary shit starts. Right here. You're trapped underground inside a small room and terrified by the colossal size and damage of the Calcabrenna. You're dead meat when they merge, even when she constantly evades Rosa's hold spell in order to wail on it. Claire isn't a problem, but her punches can cause major damage even sometimes confusion. I'd seen this in the SNES version, and even the DS version for myself. And sometimes the battle repeats as the dolls split and combine again. Picture this with the serial killing techniques by Chucky, with the ferocity of an Ursa ring, and the fusion of gold tanks. And you got yourself one of the most creepiest enemies ever concocted. And coming from my favorite installment in the Final Fantasy Juggernaut? No wonder she was named after one of the well-known demons from the Malvolge. I'm the Ekron Rider, and good luck trying to take out this tough hombre. Oh, and you take on Golbez afterwards, so... You're gonna need it.